Ah, there we are. Hi. Hello, little brother. Thank you. Uh, let me share screen. Okay. Brilliant. Can you see my full screen? Yeah, it works fine. My... Okay, thank you. Good. So we have a uh, two minutes to quickly drink some water. Right, welcome back after your one minute break. Um, so we're happy to have Nopadome Kriya from, from uh, Milano Tocca, uh, who's gonna tell us about Archer's Douglas theories, marginal deformations and 3D mirrors. And hope you explain these terms to us. Yes. <laughs> so first of all, let me use this opportunity to thank the, to thank the organizer, in particular Yang, to, for making this happen. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to uh, presenting these results. So uh, let me introduce my collaborator. So this talk will be based on um, well three pieces of work basically. Uh, one with uh, Simone Giacomelli, who is a postdoc at Oxford, is coming to be Cocker in October. Matteo Sacchi, who is a student at uh, Milano Bicocca, and he's going to Oxford this October. <laughs> Federico Carta, who is a postdoc at Durham, uh, Simone Giacomelli, and Alessandro Menino, uh, who is a PhD student in Madrid, and he's going to Desi this October. And this is also based on, uh, on work in progress uh, with the, the same uh, group of collaborators. So the main uh, character of this talk uh, will be about uh, an infinite class of uh, four-dimensional quantum field theory. It has a, a lot of symmetry here. So first of all, it has a, a lot of uh, supersymmetry, it has superconformal symmetry. So this is known as uh, 4D and equal to two superconformal field theories. Uh, it has bare a name called Azure's Douglas theories. So one of the feature of uh, why we are interested in this, because these are basically a whole, lots of uh, exactly soakable model and we love something which is exactly solvable and yet highly non-trivial. Uh, a feature of this set of theory is about uh, the presence of a uh, Coulomb branch operator with fractional scaling dimension. This is quite rare when you have a, a higher supersymmetry, for example. So, but okay, this not become rare anymore after the discover of the, this class of theory, which is infinite, an infinite class. Uh, some of these theory, you can, it, it uh, can be identified at the singular point of a Coulomb branch uh, of a, a 
4D and equal to two gauge theory. So you take gauge theory that has um, uh, 4D and equal to supersymmetry. You can go to some of these things has a very special point where the, the massless dions uh, become low, become, uh, become uh, relative non-local and become massless. And this makes the theory intrinsically interacting. So we've got the interacting non-trivial superconformal field theory in 4D equal to two in, in this way. Some of them can, can be realized in this way. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of this thing. This theory is first discovered in 1995 due to, of course, Acheris and Douglas in the context of 4D equal to two SU3 super young mills. Okay. So later on, this the same theory was discovered uh, that um, it occurred also in sp at the special point of SU2 gauge theory with one flavor. Nowadays, this theory bear a name A1, A2 theory uh, due to the notation of Chakotay, Naiske, and Wafa, uh, or I2, three due to the notation of C and Zhao. So, what are the properties of uh, the A1, A2 theory? So first of all, this theory has one dimensional Coulomb branch. We call it rank one theory. Uh, rank one means that it has one operator of a Coulomb branch of dimension six over five. And now you can see one example where the scaling dimension is fractional. Uh, and we characterize this theory by using a certain number known as central charges, which has these values. This theory, uh, due to the fractional dimension six over five, you can form an operator of order two of the dimension two. So this theory doesn't have any equal to two marginal deformation. So as a result, and since this theory is strongly interacting, it doesn't admit that any equal to two Lagrangian description because you cannot go to the point where the theory is weakly coupled and write down the Lagrangian. It led to a long, long belief that um, uh, the theory doesn't have Lagrangian at all. So this has been a, an, a, an open problem for a long time until 2016, where Mariyoshi and Song discovered that there are some n equal to one gauge theory that flows to this A1, A2 theory in the infrared. And what is uh, amazing about this is that supersymmetry get enhanced in the infrared from n equal to one to n equal to two. So this is quite an interesting aspect of uh, a Jurisdaglas theory. Now it is common nowadays to refer to any 4D and equal to two superconformal field theory with a Coulomb branch operator of fractional scaling dimension and a Jurisdaglas theory. So it embrace a, a large class of theories. And a vast number of such models can be realized using Number one, the class S construction, namely you compactify certain 6D two comma zero theory on the Riemann surfaces with punctures. Or else there is another construction, which is very popular, which is uh, involving geometric engineering in type 2B by compactification on singular Calabria three fourths. So in this talk, we'll focus on some infinite class of models known as there are lots of names, I apologize, but uh, this is uh, the name that is used in the literature, namely AM, AN, uh, or which is equivalent to AN, AM, or in this I notation. And second class is due to, uh, it's called DPSUN. These are cousins. They are really closely related to each other, which I will tell you. So for those of you who new to this, these are just basically exactly solvable model in four dimensions that have a very rich property, both mathematics and mathematical and physical properties. There are a close related also that you can change the type of algebra. This is algebra of type A. You can change it to type, let's say type D or type E. Uh, I will mention briefly type A comma D and DPSO 2M, uh, but due to the lack of time, I will not mention them in detail, okay? So what, since this theory has a higher supersymmetry, um, doesn't bear a higher, not necessarily bear a higher supersymmetry of Lagrangian. So one way to characterize them is to use uh, so-called Seibert-Witten curves and Seibert-Witten differentials. So these are the curve and the differential I show you. 
And because of the cyber differential is related to the BPS mass, it has scaling dimension one. So due to the homogeneity of these equations, you can work out all the scaling dimension. Namely, uh, you can just say that, okay, this equation has certain uh, differential has dimension one. So you can work out X, Z, and U, the scaling dimension of these. And these are what written here. So you are really important. It will play a very important role in physics. So let me let me let me tell you that. Okay, first of all, the sum is re restricted to the term such that the scaling dimension of U, these are deform they call deformation parameters, are positive. So basically, this is how you deform the, the theory. Okay. So uh, just to tell you some terminology, those UIJ in this summation that are positive are called Coulomb branch operators. This is what I mean by Coulomb branch operator. And it's uh, common to call the rank of the four-dimensional theory, the number of Coulomb branch operators. Okay, and the one that has a dimension one, this is called a mass deformation, okay? Because uh, the dimension we count in unit of mass. So this corresponds to mass deformation. And if you count the number of them, this is called the rank of global symmetry of the theory. And already at this stage, it has some quite an interesting expression that the rank of the global symmetry is the correspond to the greatest common divisor between k and n minus one. And um, if you look at, so this is the, this class. If you look at this class or model, it has at least SU and global symmetry. How do we know that? We look at the set of mass deformation and we see that ah, there are mass Casimir associated to SU and global symmetry. These are these parameters. And these other UIJ, sorry, UIJ, which uh, has dimension one, and there are GCDP n minus one of these. So they are extra on top of this SU and global symmetry. One of the interesting problem about this class of model, because you can roughly kind of um, quantify by, by computing rank from cyber within curve. But an interesting problem would be to determine the real, the true global symmetry of the theory not just simply the rank. And one technique that um, I will introduce, although not much in detail, I'm afraid, is to use magnetic quivers. This is introduced already by, by Amihai. So this is one application of, uh, of why gauge theory of that type can be very useful. This, uh, I will talk about application here. Okay, so let me specify, specialize into example. So this talk will be lots of example. So let's take DPSUN and take P equal to two. So N can be even or odd. And these are give you completely distinct theory. For N equal to two small N even, this is a Lagrangian theory. It turned out that this curve is identical to uh, a Lagrangian theory, which is 4DN equal to two as UN gauge theory with two N flavor. This is also conform, as super conformal field theory. What is even more interesting is when you take N being odd. So the scaling dimension of the Coulomb branch operator are really fractional. They're all fractional. They're, they're three half, five half, and to this number. And you can see that you cannot form the, 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 the operator of uh, scaling dimension two out of this. So there's no n equal to two marginal deformation. When this happened, we call the, uh, the corresponding superconformal field theory and isolated superconformal field theory, meaning no n equal to Lagrangian description, okay? However, as I said, uh, introduce it. Uh, this is how Ajurista class was first discovered. You can embed this into a gauge theory, which is asymptotically free namely SU and gauge theory with the 2N minus one flavor. And it turned out that this theory can be realized as special point located at the origin of the cone branch of this theory. However, although this theory doesn't admit a Lagrangian in four dimension, when you reduce it on the circle and make it a three, three dimensional theory, it turned out that all of these class of theory become Lagrangian. 
could there's a middle Lagrangian description upon reduction to, to, to three dimension. So uh, for n even, it turned out that the Lagrangian stayed the same. Uh, the description stayed the same, namely it has SU and gauge theory with two n flavor of a fundamental hypermultiplet. The isolated theory, which doesn't have any good two Lagrangian description, turn out to have Lagrangian this time. It, 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 it is described by a unitary gauge group with the same rank. So it's u n minus one with two n minus one um, flavors of hypermultiple. And this theory, so this already gives you a lot of information, which although it's in different dimensions. So now I'm talking about the interplay of the of the of gauge theory in different dimension now. But you might ask, okay, why is this useful? Of course, um, as pointed out by some speaker this morning, that um, that you can use uh, this description to study original four-dimensional theory. For example, this is a magnetic quiver. Uh, it comes in many names. Many, for example, this is called uh, in in original name back in 1996 is called a uh, mirror theory. These theory are gauge theory, for example, uh, has a unitary gauge group and by fundamental matter. You might have seen this uh, in, in previous talks. The flow to the same fixed point at this theory, and you can use this theory to study, for example, the uh, symplectic structure of the, of, the, of the Higgs branch of four dimensional theory as pointed out by Amikai this morning. So this is uh, one application. So another realization of this class of theory is uh, you can realize them on the, on the compactification of six dimensional theory uh, on a Riemann sphere with a certain puncture. These are technicality, which I'm not going into, into detail. And you can go from this class of theory, DPSUN to the A comma A theory, DPSO2N by A comma D theory by simply, uh, we call it closing the full puncture. But in the normal languages, you give vacuum expectation value of certain scalar field and close this puncture, basically. That's the a, that's a meaning of this terminology. So let me present you the, the new result. So this is, a, I will give you a certain tour of uh, this type of theory. So some of these Agerus Douglas theory have n equal to two preserving marginal deformation. And here's the formula. If you give me a n minus one, a k minus one theory, these are the formula. Those that have a zero marginal, zero n equal to two marginal deformation is said to be isolated as we have seen before, but not all of them are isolated. Some of them are isolated, some of them are not. You just have to compute this, plug in this uh, simple formula and you can tell whether this has n equal to two marginal deformation or not. Okay, and there is sim, a similar formula for DPSUN. And you might ask, okay, why is this useful? It can be used, if you manage to compute that, that the theory has a marginal deformation, you can decompose your original Archer's Douglas theory into a smaller set of theory like this. So, Basically, you can decompose the whatever theory you have into the lots of isolated piece. Isolated mean that there's no n equal to two marginal deformation and you connect them by, by the gauge group. And these are weakly coupled. So it's called weakly gauged uh, of various isolated uh, super conformal field theory. This is an example. So you can decompose, for example, D4 of SO6 into of these, these things. And of course, each of these things has a smaller set of uh, Coulomb branch operators. So they're smaller in this sense, okay? So this is a recursive process that you could do. And um, there are also something new uh, that you can do by this process. For example, you can discover new super conformal field theory using this method. Because some decomposition might not be belong to the known class. This is an example. And amazingly, this is uh, the, the also another quite interesting description that upon this decomposition might not be unique. 
So for example, this uh, happened a lot in the type D theory. Let's take a D6, D6. You can decompose it in two ways. One has SU, SO4 gauge symmetry, one has SO6 gauge symmetry. And uh, this is just to tell you that the, sometimes the reduction to 3D and the, the theory that flows to the same fixed point, namely the mirror dual theory, have completely different de description. For example, this theory has the um, special unitary gauge group, and this theory has autosymplectic group. And uh, some of them are really um, uh, have an interesting already mathematical implication. For example, uh, this theory belongs to the to the class studied by by these authors. Okay. So. This is main result number one. So we try to study all the possible n equal to two marginal deformation in, in these class of adjusted class theories and classify them. Main result number two is the, is the talk about the um, uh, general reduction to three dimension. We discovered that if you take the uh, adjusted class theory, usually of the, the class um, a comma d, a comma a, a comma d, or DPSUN or DPSO2N, and you reduce it to three dimension, you get the general result is as follows, that you get a collection of twisted hypermultiplet plus some uh, superconformal field theory, interacting superconformal field theory with a gauge theory description, always have Lagrangian description. And uh, for DPSUN, the corresponding uh, 3D N equal to four gauge theory has mixed special unitary and unitary gauge group. This is also interesting. You can do dual description in the language of um, modern terminology. This is magnetic quiver. It's a complete graph attached to tail along with free hypermultiplet. For example, uh, this is an example of the 6SU4. I have shown you this decomposition. You can do the reduction to three dimension. Okay, now that the, the result is this one. You see the mix between unitary gauge group and special unitary gauge group. And if you uh, do the mirror symmetry of this theory, it turned out that this theory have a complete graph structure attached to a tail. And once you decouple a tail, you can obtain the the mirror theory of the a comma a or a comma d and this is an example and yeah this is a more sophisticated example of dpsun the structure depends on the gcd between p and n this is an example this is a tail connecting with a complete graph n is the multiplicity of the edge in a complete graph and you can see that it's a very quite sophisticated structure and this come with the always the free hypermultiplet. This is the free sector. And suppose you decouple this tail, you end up with the, the complete graph structure, which describe the, the A comma A theory in three dimension. I should mention that this, uh, there's a huge literature on the subclass of this type of theory, namely special value P, N, and so on and so forth. But uh, this prescription, can be done in general now. Okay, we provided a, a general prescription on how to how to do this in general. Okay, and the main result number three that I would like to present is the 4D origin of the 3D free hypermultiplet. So this is quite a subtle question, and quite uh, interesting dynamics of the interplay between four dimension and three dimensional gauge theory. A few theories, let's say. So first of all, we see, we see that four-dimensional theory is purely interacting uh, at the class theory. There's no free hypermultiplet or anything like that. Upon reducing to three dimension, it becomes gauge theory plus free hypermultiplet. So one natural question when you see the free sector is to ask, where do these come from? So what are the origin of the free hypermultiplet? from the 4D perspective. And this turned out to relate it to the, the very subtle structure of the, of the so-called Higgs branch. So basically what we, what we observed was that if you go along Higgs branch of uh, this 4D theory, the, the theory Higgs 
not to just a collection of hypermultiplets, but it has a, a component which is called non-hixable superconformal field theory. What are these non-hixable non, uh, non superconformal field theory? I will explain soon. Now, upon reduction to three dimension, these theory become a collection of, of hypermultiplet, basically. So this explains the origin. So what is a non-hixable superconformal field theory? It's, four, it's a four-dimension n equal to two SCFT with no Higgs branch, but with a tri trivial Coulomb branch. Okay. An example of this would be a m minus one, a n minus one, when m and n are co-prime. So when you reduce this type of theory, you get this the the the, the type of the the collection of three sector base, uh, which is equal to the rank of this of this non-hexable field theory in the origin. And we managed to quantify this in the in the for general theory, meaning if you take this definition of GCD and take parameter n and m to be the division of uh, n and k over the GCD, we found that upon doing Higgs branch flow, you have a collection of free hypermultiplet and the m copies of these non-Higgsable superconformal field theory. So as the, k, the n plus k is un, and for the type D theory, this is a little bit more complicated. So this is a, a general result we can we can we can say about this thing. So uh, let me conclude my talk. So we have seen some interesting aspect of uh, hydrostar class theory. For example, we try to say as much as we can about any good two marginal deformation and the weak coupling class, meaning how to decompose the theory into several. Uh, isolated piece connected by gauge group, weakly coupled gauge group. We talk about interplay between four-dimensional theory and three-dimensional theory. So we find theory that uh, we, we talk about reduction of the theory to three dimension. We talk about dual theory that flows to the same fixed point, namely mirror theories of magnetic river. We talk about some subtle structure of the, of the Higgs branch of the 4D theory namely non-hixable superconformal field theory. And we explain the origin of the free sector upon reduction. Okay, so there are lots of, uh, a lot of uh, type of theory to explore, of course. And there is, um, at the beginning, I talk about n equal to one Lagrangian that flows to this Adjurist uh, Adjuris class theory that would enhance supersymmetry. We would like to understand uh, the connection between the two. Okay, so. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you very much, Nobodo.